Hey you guys from New Plastic, and today we'll make all sorts of procedural imperfection maps in Octane. You know I love procedural textures and I almost always use noise maps for imperfection maps because in most cases they're much more versatile and cost effective. In this video we'll learn how to fine tune the native noise textures in Octane to get a rich variety of looks and in the next one we'll touch on the relatively new custom patterns node in Octane for quick diverse looks and learn how to distort our nodes procedurally using the Distort Mesh UV's projection node. I made a new pack with over 50 uh, different imperfection maps, like scratches, dust, fingerprints, white marks, stains, and more, all fully procedural, so no images used at all. These are all for Octane and C4D, so if you feel like you need them, that's a great way to help yourself and help the channel. Another way to support the channel is through Patreon and YouTube subscription, where you'll get the tutorial project files as well as other perks. Follow me on Instagram at ojang, subscribe, hit the bell, share, comment, stay hydrated, let's go. Okay, so I have this simple scene with this pipe model from Bridge, an area light from the left, and this HDRI for this rim light and slight fill light. I also have this super simple universal material with a little metallic and some specular roughness. So let's start with the simplest way of making an imperfection, and the most common way that I do it. I'll add a noise node, plug it into the roughness channel. I'll add an XYZ to UVW projection node. I'll scale it down. And now it's all about playing with the noise details to achieve different effects. Usually for a simple and generic roughness grunge, I like to increase the contrast, up the omega for more details, and I'll up the gamma to get these smaller white areas. If I unsolo this, you can see we get this random rough patches, which looks cool. And I can now play with the omega and control the gamma to get more or less roughness patches. So lower omega means larger rough patches. Now we kind of reverse the look with random sharp patches. I can add a gradient node and reduce the contrast. We don't want to have full black, which means zero roughness, or full white, which means 100% roughness, because those extreme settings never look good and aren't just not realistic. And if I want more of a subtle variation, I can just reduce the contrast in the noise, which also looks really good. And just like that, we got a beautiful and realistic imperfection map that makes a huge difference. Let's duplicate this material and keep trying other things. I'll change the noise type to turbulence, and if I reduce the omega in contrast, we'll get a much more smooth and flowy pattern, which you can see looks much cleaner, doesn't look that great on the roughness channel, but if I increase the omega back up, uh, we break it up and we get all these fine details, which looks great. Almost like tiny fingerprints and smears. Super simple, super effective. Next one, let's duplicate this material, and this time let's plug it into the bump channel, and we get a really ugly and extremely rough look, and generally the bump channel will look bad if it has a lot of tiny details and a lot of contrast. So a quick fix is to reduce the contrast. So I'll make the dark gradient notch full black and the bright one a very, very dark gray. Now we get all this roughness, but in a subtle way. You can see it better if we zoom in. And again, I can play with the noise type. Let's try Perlin and up the contrast and the details a lot and play with the gamma till we get these black and white patches. And I like this look a lot, especially for a quick plaster wall look, for example, with patches of rough textures and patches of smooth texture. I think it's a bit bugged out now because it's too rough. So let's play with the scale to update the render. And yeah, now you really get these smooth patches and rough patches. And we can play with the scale and the rotation and never get any tiling and repetition like we get with image-based textures. And I can even bring down the contrast in the gradient node for a more subtle look. Nice, next one. Duplicate the material and now I want to go for a subtle dust particle look, like dust specs. So I'll change the noise type to circular and let's scale it way down. And I'll up the gamma till we get these tiny specks of white. And you can barely notice them. I'll down the gamma a bit to expose them more. You can up the omega to break them up a little, uh, but at this scale, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. And if I zoom in, you can really notice them. It's almost like the surface has been painted without being cleaned before, so it trapped all these tiny particles under the surface. They're pretty dense now, but we can make them more sparse by scaling them up and then upping the gamma to make each point smaller. And now you can see they're much more sparse. You can play with the rotation and position to place them wherever you want. But the main back and forth here is between the overall scale and the gamma settings to get the look you want. I use this type of bump all the time and I think it's super effective. And of course you can get the reverse effect by inverting the noise 
and playing with the gamma to expose the dots, uh, which are now black, and get tiny holes, kind of like air bubbles in a plaster or concrete surface. And you can increase the effect by plugging the same noise into the albedo channel. And with a gradient map, we can give the holes a slightly darker color to make the holes seem deeper and more defined. We can also up the contrast on the bump gradient node and now the effect is much more aggressive. Same as the previous one, I use this effect a lot. Okay, next, duplicate material. Let's clear the albedo channel, change the noise type to chips and up the gamma till we get these defined Voronoi lines. I actually want to invert them so the lines are black and bring the gamma down to make the lines thinner and thinner and you can barely see the lines but if you see how it looks we now get these very subtle and tiny details that kind of feel almost like tiny scratches i can break them up even further by upping the omega and it's a very subtle but effective look i can increase the contrast on the gradient node to make the effect stronger and maybe scale it up on one axis to make the chips less uniform Nice. Okay, let's try to get a bit more complex in this last example. Duplicate the material and I'll bring the gamma up to balance the levels, add more details, and let's scale the whole thing way up. Plug the gradient node into the roughness channel and I'll bring the white notch in a little bit. And I actually want less details here and maybe scale it down a bit. Okay, let's make the whole gradient brighter. So mid gray to full white. Hmm. Bring the gamut down to get more whites. And yeah, we're starting to get this kind of a frosty look. Let's add an add node, gradient to texture two, and we'll plug the noise to texture one through a UVW transform node. Let's add a transform node to it. And now we can scale this noise without affecting the original one. So we're getting two variations on this noise, but we're only using one noise node. So I scale it way down and I'll also add a gradient node. I'll right click to invert the notches and crush the blacks. So our noise is now not only way smaller, but also inverted and with much higher contrast. Okay, nice. So now they're blended together. I'll crush the blacks even more and scale it up a bit. And I actually want to break up the small noise a bit. So I'll add a multiply node to the gradient and plug our first noise to texture one. Again, using a different UVW transform node and plug this whole thing to texture one of the add node. So now we get these overlaying black patches that break up the small noise, but they're placed exactly where the initial noise is. So let's add a transform node and adjust the scale. Nice. We can add another gradient node and crush the blacks a bit. Okay, it's not bad. I'll adjust the small noise a little. Maybe it's a bit too harsh. So I'll reduce the contrast and yeah, I like this much better. I'll make the white in the gradient on the bottom noise a bit darker. So we can actually see some of the small noise that's layered on top of it. If they're both white, then they fully blend together when they're overlaid. And that's nice. I can end it here or add maybe another noise and blend it with everything using another add node. I'll just plug the same projection node to it and I'll plug this UVW transform to the power slot so it acts like a mask to this noise. So let's change the types of circular, scale it way down and up the gamma to choke the whites till we only get these specks and we barely see it because it's masked in the same area that the other noise is masked. So I'll add a gradient node here and invert the notches and maybe scale it up a bit and bring some of the white back in. And yeah, now you can definitely see some of this new detail and I can add a gradient to all of this, maybe to brighten the whole thing up and make it rougher. And yeah, you can keep playing with all these settings and noises and gradients so you get the look you're going for. And that's what I love about procedural textures. You can really create your own unique textures and looks that literally no one else has by being able to adjust every single aspect of it. And you don't need to worry about tiling images or low resolution images. These procedural textures will look exactly the same at 4K, 8K, even 24K renders. Not that you'll need 24K renders, but you get my point. I wanted to end it here because in the next video I'll continue with maps that are even more complex using the distort mesh UVs projection node and sources beyond the noise node. So stick around for the next video 
get the pack if you need it. And last but not least, a huge thank you to my impeccable patrons and members, Emmanuel Omelas, Yinning Gong, Guillaume Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Voice Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, Hader, Jamie Nix, Leo, Miskick 2 s Peter Rodiger, Kenji Shin, Chris Hyde, 3D Monkey Biz, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desolet, Suki Violet Su, Derek Schultz, Maurice Hickendorf, Arlen, The 22 Design, Studi Image, Matus Jedrzejewski, Blue Hamel, Mark Cragen, Joshua A. Coy, Punk Sukornim Siri, Webb, Kong Idiot, Matty de Gueldre, Yung Jong Cho, NZ, IEMN, Golfino 666, Ali Yasser, RDM, Una Lee, Mouse from Next House, Rom30, and everybody else on the list. Thank you. You're a huge part of why I can come back and make more of these videos. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.